Well, shalom, shalom, and welcome once again in this series that we are now doing on the Sha'arei Halakha, uh, the ways or the gate of Halakha, of Jewish law. <coughs> and this is more of a primer for those wanting to go through conversion. Uh, we are right now in chapter 3 of the book that is usually recommended by many Batedin. <coughs> to study and to learn. We're in chapter 3, Sha'ari Halakha, and this is of uh, Rabbi um, Zev, let me just take a look here, Rabbi Zev Greenwald. Of course, those of you <coughs> wanting to also review Rabbi Donin's material, uh, you'll also find it that we've covered that as well on the ways of Israel to be a Jew. Just to look in the search of the videos of to be a Jew, and you should find that series as well. We've covered all of the chapters in that book as well. So basically, we're, we're, we're here to be able to facilitate the learning for you on a way that's not going to be expensive, because absolutely free. Um, if you wish to give a donation, you're welcome to, and we will receive it in Ways of Israel, in Spanish, Los Caminos de Israel. You can also reach me if any questions you have at 786-306-8211. <clears throat> or if you wish to uh, reach me directly by email, you can at rabbi, R-A-B-B-I, Otero, O-T-E-R-O, at yahoo.com. Okay, so we're in chapter 3 of Birkat uh, Hasha'ar, or uh, by Ashkenaz pronunciation, Birchas Hasha'ar, the morning blessing. Every morning we recite a number of blessings, thanking God for His constant kindness. And this, these blessings we, re, we call Birkat Hasha'ar, or the morning blessings. These blessings were instituted by and large of the sages and instills in us the realization that all of us comes to possess something from God. Reciting these blessings intently impresses upon us that life, clothes, vision, all of the material things are really a, a divine gift. It, it is something that we thank God for. So when we contemplate life, a person realizes how much he should be really thankful to God for the, the great abundance that he has given us. And this becomes part of a gratitude. Now, in several of my messages, I mentioned the importance of being um, grateful. Fortunately, we live in a society of a lot of ingrates. They do not thank the other person for having provided them for perhaps a gift, a blessing, or so forth. And really, we need to learn and re-educate our society to be people that are thankful. A thankful person is a person that recognizes that which was given to them is really a, an act of kindness. <clears throat> and unfortunately, we don't see that in today's society. We think we deserve everything, that we must uh, be given these things. And that is really a whole different mindset. And this is why our society is really changing in leaps and bounds. When a person begins to be more grateful to one's fellow man as well as to God, we begin to instill that notion of kindness and of meekness and of humility. When contemplating life, a person realizes how much he should thank his Creator for the abundance of good that was given. Bidkat Hashahar expresses this gratitude towards God and as a result, gratitude towards one another. The sages ordained the blessings to be recited before partaking with various pleasures in this world, as it says in Birkat, uh, in Birkat 35a in the Talmud, says a person is forbidden to derive enjoyment from this world without first reciting a blessing. Whoever derives enjoyment without a blessing is like one who appropriates a sacred, in a, misappropriates a sacred object. Since everything is really belongs to God, even that which really is, is you might say, a necessity of human beings, for example, the water I'm about to drink, we need to say thank you, God, for what you provided. And in that like manner, give you a perfect example through this video, by saying a blessing that normally applies to many drinks, <clears throat> except for wine, which is, Baruch Ata Adonai Elohinu Melech HaOlam, Shehakol Nihia Bidvaro. So we bless God for providing us with the sustenance of that which we may consider our very necessity as water 
is to our bodies. We cannot live for wa without water for, for, for that much time. So even with that, we thank God, we bless God uh, for having provided us with the water that sustains us, as well as the bread, our daily bread. <clears throat> And the text on which we're going to look at in a few seconds <clears throat> is based on the the Seattle Sephardic community, although much of this material in the book is based on um, a more Ashkenazic reading. Nevertheless, I'm going to utilize this so, Sidur, which is the one I normally utilize, and some other ones as well that are Sephardic. But in your own community, you may have Tehillat Hashem for those who are Chabad. You may have Art Scroll. So you may want to make reference to your own Sidur that is utilized in your community in particular. And one of the things that we first read is when we get up in the morning, as soon as we wake up, as we saw in the other video, the previous video, is that we say, Mode ani lefanecha. Of course, the women uh, would say, Moda ani. And of course, if, if for some reason you do not read Hebrew, is perfectly well established to be able to say the blessings in the language that you know. And because this particular class is in English, I am going to be reading it in English instead of in Hebrew. I give thanks to you, living and everlasting King, for you have restored my soul with mercy. Great is your faithfulness. Now, <clears throat> first thing we do, we must now at that point begin the Netila Yedaim, which is the washing of the hands, who has commanded us to wash our hands. And this is followed by Asher Yatsar, who has formed man with his wisdom, in which we thank God for creating our bodies and our Elokai Neshama, our godly soul. And this is the reason why we say, may, God, may, God, may my God, the soul you have given me, and here we thank God for that soul that God has given us, um, in, in which we thank God for creating the soul. Why, when reciting this, this, this Elokai Nishma, Nishma, one should pause between the word Elokai and the rest of the blessing. After that, the blessing Asher, Asher Natan Lesechvi, who gives the heart who gives the heart or rooster understanding until Hagomel Chasadim who bestows great kindness are recited. One should not respond Amen after hearing the blessings of Hama Avir Sheina who removes sleep since the section following it is considering part of the blessing. So one must not recite a blessing or any phrase containing the words of the Torah or God's name if one's hands are not clean, if they have been touching the body of shoes, etc. So the problem that we face when we mentioned in the other video is normally not a lot of people have a Neville washer next to their bed. And by Sephardim, we understand by rubbing uh, even the, you might say, the bedspread with our hands, we thus are able to get up and we are thus able to move forward and go and wash our hands. Not like the Ashkenazim that basically requires that a a vase as it were, a cup of water is next to their bed and they have to wash their hands before they actually get out of the bed and move forward. <clears throat> and you'll see this with a lot of especially Chabad children uh, that they have this practice as well, this custom. Now what do we do? After washing one's hands before drying them, what do we say? We, all, we say, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us concerning the washing of hands. And so the way we normally do this is alternately right, left, right, left, like I mentioned in the other video. Every time one attends to one's bodily function, the hands should be washed and dried in, in the following blessing said. This is the blessing that is said um, as I mentioned to you, the Yatsar, blessed are you, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who formed the man with his wisdom and created within his openings and cavities, and it is obviously known in the presence of your glorious throne that if one were blocked, and if one were, were ruptured, it would be impossible to exist even for a short while. Blessed are you, Lord, who heals all flesh and performs wonders. 
it's very, very important. Then after you use the restroom, whether you, like they would say, hey, my kids, number one or number two, you need to be able to say this blessing once you leave the restroom. It's really thanking God for allowing us to be able to go to the restroom because if any of these orifices would be blocked, we would probably be in the hospital. And so we thank God even for utilizing the restroom. One should immediately uh, recite the following blessing after who formed man. Now, <clears throat> right after that, we have Tehillat Hashem, where we say, My mouth will declare the praise to the Lord, and all flesh will bless His holy name forever and ever, and we will bless God from now and forevermore. Praise God. One of the first things I ask, and many people ask me, is should people who are not Jewish recite this as well? It's a wonderful practice to get involved in everything that you do. So, for example, you who are Christians and you've asked yourselves, well, you know what? So beautiful that you guys wake up in the morning and you say this prayer and you say, thank God. Yes, to you too, you are permitted to say this as well, even though this is a Jewish custom. Nevertheless, it is an incredible blessing upon all who basically get up in the morning and they thank God, they bless God for the life that God our Creator has given us. So my God, the soul which you have bestowed in me is pure. You have created it, you formed it, you breathed into it, into me, and you preserve it within me. You will eventually take it from me and restore it to me in the time to come. So long as the soul is within me, I thank, I give thanks to you. Lord my God and God of my fathers, that you are the Lord of all creations, master of all souls, ruler of all creatures, alive and existing eternally. Blessed are you, Lord, who restores souls to dead bodies. Now this is very important because it's, it says literally, it is God who restores the soul to the dead matims, in other words, the, the, the cadaver. It says right after that, and we begin the blessings that we've read, Blessed are you, Lord God, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gave the rooster, the heart understanding, to distinguish between the day and the night. <clears throat> now in here, this is usually done during the time of when it's waking. Now before we even say anything, any portions of, to of Torah, we begin to arise to thank God for the different aspects that we learn. And here we go into actually the different blessings. And sometimes this is read at the synagogue um, and this sometimes it's read at home. And so because it's so well put together in the Siddur of the Seattle Sephardic community, I'm going to just read it as it would say, as one would read it. And you can read it in your own language. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gives sight to the blind. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who releases the imprisoned. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who straightens the bent. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who clothes the naked. Obviously, this is you would normally say once you're clothed, right? You put on your shirt, your clothes, and so forth. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who gives strength to the weary. You're now getting up and around. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who spreads the earth above the waters. Blessed are you, Lord King... God, King of the Universe, who prepares the steps of man. You're putting on your shoes now, right? Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who provides all my needs. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who girds Israel with might. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who crowns Israel with glory. Now, in particular, the men usually will say the following. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who did not make me a Gentile. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who did not make me a slave. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who did not make me a woman. Now, some people will take offense to this, mainly because the man, the Jewish man, is making a distinction between the Gentile, the slave, and the woman. And that's not the purpose. It is only to in emphasize the uniqueness that he has in his world when he gets up. Obviously, the woman have a different way to say it. The men, ha the, the Gentiles also have a different way of saying this. And also even the slave who's enslaved. Although here in this country, thank God, that is no longer applicable in many cases. 
unless you want to consider work your slavery. In that case, we are all a slave in that sense. But when women will normally say, and please listen, also the non-Jewish person would also say, Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who did not make me a Gentile, says the woman. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who did not make me a slave. And we all would say, in this point, even the non-Jewish person, the Gentile, Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who made me according to his will. Now, this also the woman says, and all will say, whether Jewish or not, whether man or female, Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who removes the restraints of sleep from our eyes and slumber from our eyelids. This is what we do when we wake up. And may it be your will, Lord our God, God of our fathers, to make me study the Torah regularly and to hold fast to your commandments. Do not bring us into the grasp of sin, nor in the grasp of transgression. Do not cause us to be tested and scorned, or to be held in contempt. Distance us from the evil inclination. If you notice, in this prayer, those of you who are Christians are very similar to the fa our Father's prayer that was was recited, because based on those elements, uh, even Jesus had taught the same thing. This prayer is thoroughly very Judaic by our sages, and it's the basis of recognizing God in every aspect of our life. This is why we ask him, do not cause us to be tested. Thank you very much, because I can find him myself, or scorn to be held in contempt. Distance us from the evil inclination and bond us to the good inclination. Grant us love, favor, and kindness, and compassion in your eyes and the eyes of all who see us, and bestow bountiful kindness upon us. Blessed are you, Lord, who bestows bountiful kindness upon his people, Israel. <clears throat> now, we're not going to go into the area that we one must not recite any blessing of any phrase containing words of Torah or God's name until our hands are clean. By many, in the morning, that has been already absolved. However, the tradition of many, because they walk from or they go from their home to the synagogue to the shul, they'll wash their hands as well before they start the prayers, their, their prayers, officially their prayers in the shul. And normally most synagogues do have a place where you can wash your hands. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to now look at <clears throat> the blessing that we say concerning the words of the Torah. Because before we can move on, we will bless God for the words of the Torah we spoke. And only then can we have our normal conversations. So if someone gets offended that someone has not said hello to you, it could be, especially early morning, it could be because they have not yet prayed. And therefore, not to violate these rules and laws in which they want to make sure they bless God before they even say hello to a fellow human being, they will not speak back or respond to your good mornings. So do not take offense whatsoever on this point. If you see a person does not respond to your good morning, especially a Jewish person who does not uh, respond to you early in the morning, good morning. It's not that they don't want to. It's that normally they want to make sure that they say good morning to God first, as it were. And that's an indication. This is why when we get first get up in the morning, it's a good practice to thank God and to bless God, so that way we can also respond in kindness and with a good word to our fellow human beings. And it says, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us and has set us apart with his commandments and commanded us concerning the words of the Torah. al divret torah In other words, when we say Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedishanu BaMitzvotav Vatsivanu Al Divrei Torah We are blessing God for the commandments that He's made us, given to us and all of these commandments, my friends, are a gift to us 
to make us a different and distinct people. Without these commandments, we would be no different than anybody else. What makes the Jew a Jew is the fact that God has given us these commandments and when we put it into practice, it separates us from the rest. It makes us different from the rest. It's not because we have something more special than a person who doesn't have it. Even that Baba Maestro I, I deal with because it's something that you'll find in a lot of Hasidic thought in which that, oh, you have a special soul uh, and, and the rest of the people don't have that. And I, and I discuss that at length. God has created all human beings in the image of God. This, this Neshama Elokai, all humanity possess it. Whether they tap into the potential that already exists in them or not is a whole different issue. Of course, you're going to have a lot of the rabbis say, Moshe is completely wrong, don't listen to him. He, uh, you know, and start disqualifying me and disqualifying whatever titles I may or may not have just so they can, they can be able to prove their point. But the Torah is very clear, my friends. This form of, of making this type of dissension was originated by these movements that tries to make the Jewish person feel much higher level than everybody else because they've been so humiliated and oppressed for many years. And when you look at the history when this whole thing started of having this whole entire theology created, you'll understand the reason why uh, many Jews don't hold by, by it. Yes, you can be you can be within the perimeters of orthodoxy and not necessarily ascribe to those notions. But let's move further. <clears throat> it says now we read now the the parsha or the portion of the Torah in Numbers chapter six, verse twenty two and through twenty seven. And here is where the blessing comes into place. Now please keep in mind those of you who may be upset at the fact that I said the blessing in Hebrew utilizing the holy name, it is permitted to be able to say for the sake of learning, and this is a medium for the sake of learning. Obviously you would not say it just to say it. You would say it because you're putting on and you're going to commit to do one of the commandments and there should be no interruption. For the sake of learning, we are able to do this. Now let's continue further. So after we say the blessing, we continue with another blessing. And that blessing has to do with realizing the fact that God has given the Jewish people the gift of the Torah. And it says it just like this. It says, Blessed are you, Lord, God, Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from among all peoples and gave us his Torah, in other words, his teachings. Blessed are you, Lord, who gives the Torah. And this is a very powerful section because it tells, it tells the Jewish people what makes them different from all the other people. Again, the uniqueness of the Jewish people, and this is what makes the nation of Israel unique than everything else. And if it does not have this as its major tenet, as its constitution, then those people who don't see it that way, and they live very secular lives, and they don't have this as their focus, then you're no different than the rest of the nations. And eventually, your descendants will become um, just among the rest of the people. What makes a Jew a Jew? What makes an Israel Israel? It is not their cultural standing. It is not their emotional cardiac standing. It is the very thing that defines the laws of the people, which is the very teaching that we receive from Har Sinai, from Mount Sinai. So, if you don't have that as your basis, as your constitution, as your foundation, as your existence, how can you even say you're Jewish? How can you even say you're part of Am Yisrael? Because the very basis of our existence relies not on our cultural uh, experience, but more so by our definition of what we stand on. And is st we're standing on the very gift, listen to this, the very gift that God has given us as a people. If you don't recognize that gift as something divinely given, then you're no different, my friend, 
than the rest of the Goyims, the rest of the nations. And even some of the other nations, as Rambam talks about, perhaps has a stronger connection. Even it is through a very perverted or diverted source, then many of the other Jews who basically don't even believe in our Torah that has completely rejected and refuted it. And all their claims are is cardiac Jew. So let's go back over here because we're going to go see something very important here. Blessed are you, our Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from among all peoples and gave us his Torah. Blessed are you who gives, and that's in the present tense, who gives the Torah. This tells us something very important. A people who is not a people can become part of God's people. At the very moment that a person receives, and we're, I will get into this in, in our Spanish lectures of conversions and converts, because at the very moment a person accepts upon him or herself the yoke of the Torah, the yoke of Jewish law, at that point, technically, he has already assumed the most important and basic elements of being a Jew. Here is where we defined who is a Jew and who is not a Jew. If a person does not take upon themselves the yoke of the Torah, even though they're incapable or they feel that they're not able to keep up with it, that does not denigrate or deny the fact that they have entered into a covenant, into a, an agreement with HaKodesh Baruch Hu as a people. This is after the fact. And he gives the Torah, which tells us that there's a renewing fact to factor to this. That even though a person may be disconnected from the observance of Torah, the Torah is continuously being given out to God's people with an opportunity to renew their strength, their force, their commitment to observance. So it's never too late to become observant of Torah commandments. Never too late to get up from your from the floor that you've been cast down to because you feel that you have not been a good Jew. It's time to get up. Time to arise. And those of you who feel a very affinity to, to the Jewish faith because you've always believed it, you've never followed anything else but realized that God's word, God's Torah is the truth, then it's time for you to climb aboard and grasp the tree of life, which is the Torah. For those who grasp hold on the Torah, we are told and we are taught, possess and has eternal life. Incredible op uh, concept here. So when we say this, who gives the Torah, the Torah is our life. It's our existence. It's not an option out. It's not a way to opt out out of life. It is the very life and existence of the Jewish people. And that's what makes us different than among the rest. Is it easy? Absolutely not. It is unique and it causes you to live and be different. That's what the Torah is. And what does the word Torah mean? The word Torah literally means God's teaching. This was God's gift to the Jewish people. God wanted an instructional manual, you might say, and he gave it over to the people that accepted it. Yes, the Jewish people accepted this gift from God. While all the other nations was presented this gift, the Jewish people accepted it. But among the other nations, there were a lot of them that wanted to become a part of that people. But because the majority did not accept it, it was then given the option to all Israel. And I want you to read what it says, the blessing of the Torah that we will now get into, which is very important. This is the, the aspect where the Torah and all of its commandments and one's knowledge of the Creator learns how to observe these mitzvot, these commandments. This is why the obligation is to us to study the Torah, the span of the life of a Jew, as God told Yehoshua, Joshua, 
you shall study it day and night. Yehoshua chapter 1 verse 8. The reward for Torah study is exceedingly great, our sages tell us. The study of the Torah equals all the other commandments. In other words, why we're so involved in learning? I want you to understand, many of us get frustrated because we're not able to fulfill all of the commandments. And sometimes some people, because of their situation in life, they feel stuck because they feel, well, I'm not able to do this commandment. I'm not able to do this mitzvot. And yet, when you sit down and you learn and you study Torah, it begins to illuminate you and guide you and give you the strength to be able to have faith in God in such a level. This is what it says in Mishnah Peah 1.1. The study of Torah equals all other commandments. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. It says what it says in the prophet Habakkuk. That the just shall live by his faith. Not the faith of somebody else, but his faith. As he is growing in strength, understanding Torah study, he starts growing and strengthening his emunah in God, his faith in God. This is what does that mean. This is why it's so important that as you study and you learn, you begin to grow exponentially and of conviction. This is why we have, we're so stubborn about our God. This is why we, that our God, when we deal with issues of our God, it's non-negotiable. It's a serious matter on a personal level. The Birkat HaTorah expresses the great importance of Torah study. And these blessings must be recited intently with a feeling of joy as we are thanking God for choosing us as His chosen people from among other nations and for giving us His Torah. My friends, this is reason for rejoicing. We can't live without learning more. It is our essence. It is who we are. Now, we may not study Torah uh, this includes even the holy subject, but before reciting the blessings. But a person who wishes to study early in the morning, before reciting uh, the morning prayer, Shacharit, should recite the Birkas HaTorah before he begins his study. So, for example, you want to study early in the morning? We'll read this Birkas HaTorah that is in the beginning part of Siddur and go start studying. So, what do we study? We say, but we, in addition to that, we say, Blessed are you, Lord, God, a King of the universe, who sanctified us with the commandments and commanded us concerning the words of the Torah. Lord our God, please make pleasant the words of your Torah in the mouth and in the mouth of your people, Israel. And may we and our descendants and the descendants of our descendants all be perceivers of your name and students of your Torah for its own sake. In other words, we're not doing this for the money to make money. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from among all the peoples and gave us his Torah, his divine teachings. Blessed are you, Lord, who gives Torah. It is from God's very mouth that we receive his teachings. And then it says here, And, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, And thus you shall bless B'nai Israel and say to them, Listen to these words. What a wonderful way to get up in the morning with a blessing instead of with a curse. And what are you to say? Adonai bless you and guard you. And Adonai shine his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord turn his countenance towards you and grant you shalom. Shalom means peace, means to be whole, means to be complete. My friends, if you want a blessing to be completely whole, what greater blessing to hear this from the mouth of Hashem himself telling Moses to speak to Aaron to tell his children I'm gonna bless you I bless you and I guard you I'm gonna shine my countenance upon you and be gracious to you and I'm gonna have my countenance towards you and grant you peace and it says Veshemu esh mi al b'nei Israel ve'ani abrechem and I shall set my name upon b'nei Israel and I will 
Not I may. Not I you know, will think about it. I will bless them. What an incredible guarantee to wake up early in the morning and know God is going to bless you. God makes that promise to you, to all of Israel. Now, the Mishnah uh, Beruah also advises parents to continually pray to God that their children become Torah students and righteous men and good character traits, that they should have this in mind when they recite the prayer of Ahavar Daba, you have loved us with great love, before the Shema, before the, and in the Birkat HaTorah. When reciting the passage of Benie Anaknu, may we in our offspring that I just read, as well as Uva Ol Sion Goel in a Redeemer shall come out of Zion, when they recite these words, so that we do not struggle in vain nor produce futility. What a what a, an observation that everything that we do when we get up in the morning, that's not going to be in vain. It's not going to be emptiness. Thus, the parents should pray that their children will succeed in Torah studies and spiritual endeavors. Immediately after reciting the Bechah Torah, we observe the mitzvah of, Torah, of Torah studying by reciting this Kohanim blessing, as well as the, the section in the Mishnah that appears right after the Siddur in the, in the prayer book, after the Bechah Torah. Why do we do this? Our life is not to be lived in vain or in vanity. Our life is to be lived in purpose, with purpose. Even if you fail in many of the areas of the commandments, even though you fall short, get yourself back up and remember you have a divine calling as a Jew, as part of Kalal Israel. You think you can't do it? Try it. Get back up. There's time that we fail in our faith and belief in God and believe there is no God. But at this very moment in time, this is when the Creator becomes real in your life and you realize there is a God. And this God is the God that our people cried out unto and He responded. So next time you feel down and out in your Jewish faith or in your faith, get back connected. The procedure to follow if one remained, for example, awake all night, there are different halakhic opinions concerning how a person who did not sleep deeply on his bed and should uh, recite the blessing of al netila yadaim eloke neshama neshama in hama'avir sheina in berkaz haTorah. The Mishnah Berurah sets down the following procedures. Before Shachris, or in the morning prayer, the person should relieve himself, wash up, and then perform Netilat Yadaim and recite the blessings Al Netilat Yadaim, which is take my hands to wash, and Asher Yatsar, if you use the bathroom. If he does not need to relieve himself, he should, not, he should listen to someone who slept during the night reciting these blessings and rely up and reply to, to them. Amen. Reply to them, Amen. Now, both during one reciting the blessing, the listener should intend for the listener to fulfill his obligation to recite the blessing by listening. The listener should reply, Amen. The person should not recite the blessings of Elokai Nishma and Hama'avir Sheina, but should listen to someone uh, else recite them. But both reciting the blessing, the listener should intend the listener to fulfill his obligation to recite the blessing by listening. And therefore, the listener should reply, Amen. Remember, the Amen means that you agree with what the person is uttering. The person should listen to someone else recite Birkat Torah, and both should intend the listener to fulfill his obligation to recite the blessing by, by listening. The, listening. the listener should reply, Amen, and he should then recite the verse as mentioned before, in order to observe the mitzvah of studying the Torah in the Birkat HaTorah. If a person slept during the night, and he slept a, a very uh, normal sleep at night, then he's straight awake at the following night. He may recite the Birkat, Birkat HaTorah in the morning. A person who wore his sitsits throughout the night, whether or not he was asleep, should not, should not recite the blessing for sits in the morning. Rather, he should wrap himself in the Talit Kadol 
and recite the blessing for the sitsits over it, intending to include his tali katan in the blessing. Now, I'm saying this because, as I know in Chabad, many of them sleep with their sitsits. One of the things that I have instructed my child is that in order to be able to say the blessing, you must remove your sitsits before going to sleep. And let me say the mitzvah of wearing sitsits katan, uh, first, it's de, uh, it's derabanan to a certain extent, but in addition, in addition to that, uh, there is no uh, requirement to wear sitsits at night. As a matter of fact, um, I would suggest for many of you who have kids, so that they continue to learn to bless God upon putting on the sitsits, to take off their sitsits before they go to sleep. Why? Because the blessing is in instructing the child on the commandment and not necessarily have them just wear it as a person would wear a piece of cloth or a normal piece of clothes. And thus, this way you instruct a child as he should go. In this way he would learn. Now after he's grown up, he wants to be able to sleep with his sitsits, then he should know these rules. And, um, and again, there are other issues that we're going to be covering regarding sitsits, like using, it, using your sitsits outside of your, your clothing while going to the bathroom. Obviously, the sitsits is holy, and we're going to go into that a little bit later. Um, and there becomes an issue whether you should even carry your your sitsits katan into the bathroom, or make sure that they're like folded as to a like into a talit bag. That even a talit bag, you can take it into a bathroom, but as long as it's not exposed. The person who wore his sitsits throughout the night. Whether or not he was asleep, should not recite the blessing for his sitsits. <coughs> rather, rather he should wrap himself in talit gadol and recite the blessing for sitsits over it, intending to include his talit katan in his blessing. The berkat hashar are recited even by a person who stayed awake all night. If one did not recite the berkat hashar, the morning blessing before the morning prayers. Um, he may recite them after a shacharit, in other words, after the morning prayers. Uh, the exception to the rule is the our ruling of the netilat yadaim, washing your hands, the alukai neshamam, um, and the berkat oram. There are doubts re regarding whether or not these blessings are to be recited. Therefore, one should always recite them in, in the morning before the morning prayer. Now, the reciting of the asha yatsar, who has formed man, during the day is if every time one has to use the restroom to relieve himself. He should wash his hand with water and recite the blessing Asher Yatsar and should not recite the blessing of al Natalat after washing the hands because obviously he would be in the bathroom and you'd be utilizing Hashem's name. When using the bathroom a person should not bare his body more than necessary. One should wash his hands outside the bathroom. If it's not possible to wash his hands outside, he should wash his hands in the bathroom and then dry them outside and say the blessing, obviously, outside. One should wash his hands after leaving the bathroom, even if he did not make use of it. When reciting the blessing of Ashar Yatsar, Asher Yatsar, we give thanks to God who has created man's body with marvelous wisdom and who keeps a person's organ functioning. And this is the purpose of this. He is, it is God who heals through this natural process of relieving ourselves uh, all of our flesh. And we are able to exist all the time. And the text of this blessing is in the passage that I had read earlier. Now in our next video we are going to look at preparation for prayer and the morning minion and at synagogue and some of the rules that one should always keep in mind when going to a synagogue, a Bet Knesset. Shalom, shalom. And this is the third chapter of Sha'ash Halakha and stay tuned for the, the next series or the next chapter which will be dealing with preparation for tefillah in the minion and in synagogue. Shalom Shalom.